Well, good morning, Central family. How are you doing today? We are so glad that you are here with us. And whether uh, it's your first time visiting with us or you've been here for as long as you can remember, we hope that uh, you feel at home today. If you're still in the lobby, we would encourage you to make your way into the auditorium because our experience is beginning very soon. And um, <laughs> I want to introduce you to my co-host this morning. My name is Conrad, as you can tell from right below us here. Um, my co-host for today is the lovely Christiane. How are you doing today, Christiane? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. You know, we've uh, got so many things that are happening today. We've got baby dedications, It's uh, which are always one of my favorite times of, uh, of the year. And uh, I, I, the weather is fantastic aside, but it, that Beautiful. reminds me that I can't believe Thanksgiving was just last week. So I know. are you still over. eating your Thanksgiving leftovers? Oh my goodness, I made <laughs> pot pie. I made oh stuff out of recipes of things, of other things to use up. Wonderful. Or we would be eating it all month if I didn't. Oh, I, I'm, I'm for you. I'm for that. <laughs> Turkey all month is a great, a great thing, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. That kind of food <laughs> is great. So when we're thinking even about turkey, I'm thinking about kids, not because they're turkeys, yep. Yep. but because they're kids. <laughs> if you happen to have any children, in. We'd love for you to bring them into our kids programming. Um, it's available for newborns up to grade eight. Um, you can check them in at the lobby or by our Connections Vault. We also have volunteers to help you get checked in and assist you in to getting them into your child's class. The kids really enjoy their own experience so that you can enjoy the experience as well. And if you're here for the very, very first time um, and you're visiting and you haven't connected yet with us, we'd love to get to know you better. Head to our connections wall in the lobby, see the blue shirts or the lanyards and find any of those. If you have questions, ask them, or you can even text us at 905-937-5610. Scan the QR code as well in the back seat in the front of you and we'll have somebody connect with you. That sounds great. And if you're joining us online today, I want to extend a warm welcome to you as well. And I uh, just encourage you to engage with us in our chat, uh, where one of our online hosts will be willing and able and love to connect with you. So why don't you let us know where you're watching from? And uh, you can just uh, comment in the chat. Uh, you can uh, click on the request prayer button if you're looking for prayer this morning. And uh, you know, here at Central, we just believe that God's love is for everyone. And so we would love for you to help us share um, that experience with everyone. And so uh, if you're online today, watching on YouTube or Facebook or somewhere else, uh, why don't you just click on the share button from where you are and uh, share that with your families and your friends. And if you're here with us in person, why don't you snap a photo and uh, tag us here at uh, Online Central CC. And I just want to spend a few minutes talking about our vision here at Central. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really very simple. We're here to help you to connect to God and to each other. And uh, Sundays are just one way that we do that. Um, you know, it can feel like a, a pretty big and overwhelming space For while sure. you're here. And so the primary way that we foster our connections is through our groups. And at Central, we have five different types of groups here for you to connect with. We've got community groups, small groups, interest groups, support groups, and serve groups. Now that we're in the, the full swing of fall, uh, our fall groups are well underway. And so there are many opportunities for you to get connected. And so uh, whether you're looking for a larger community group, maybe a smaller, more intimate group, or something in between. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a group for you. And so um, if you have any questions about uh, how to get connected, we'd encourage you to visit us at our connection wall where a volunteer or a pastor will be happy to talk to you. And if you're online today or you're watching this later in the week, why don't you just visit our website, centralcc.ca slash groups. Yeah, and another really cool thing that we have happening is Trunk or Treat. This is a fantastic it opportunity is. to connect with our community here in the Niagara region. It's happening next Sunday, October 27th from 5 till 8. Um, trunk or Treat in the parking lot A. You'll see everything out there. Um, there's another, a huge number of ways that people can get involved in. You have an opportunity for that night to decorate a car if you like. You can do parking, cafe. You can donate candy for the kids. Thank you for those who've already donated. But guess what? Candy is never a service. Plus, so if you've got more candy, or actually you'd like to give financially towards that donation, you can mark it trunk or treat, and the team will actually buy it on your behalf. So if you're looking to get involved, go to centralcc.ca/connect for more details. This is an amazing opportunity to be a light in the community, and trunk or treat just lights up our community for that. It absolutely does. That's great. And uh, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but. Um uh, let's talk about Christmas for a second. <laughs> uh, you may have noticed in our lobby, 
that uh, we've got uh, tickets available now for a Niagara Christmas. And so mm-hmm. this is the third year that we're having this amazing event for our community and for yourself. And, and uh, the date of this is going to be December the 7th. We're actually going to have three shows, 3 p.m., 5 p.m., and 7 p.m. And so the general admission tickets for this start at $20. And uh, kids are that are 10 and under are absolutely free. Oh, that's awesome. And so we want to make sure that um, you get your seat, secure your seat early, uh, because we anticipate having a full house. So uh, visit this website, centralniagara.org slash Christmas. And while you're there, you can get your tickets and get all of the details. Yeah, and I just want to take a moment to remind our church family of the amazing opportunities that we have to pay back to our community here at Central. Um, It's because of your generosity that we can gather every Sunday and provide groups and programs and events like Trunk or Treat and Niagara Christmas into our community. I want you to know though, if you are a guest today, please don't feel obligated to give. Um, If you call Central your home and you came prepared to give, there are three simple ways that people can give here. Um, The first one is the website at centralcc.ca slash give. That's a one-time gift or you can set up an ongoing giving as well. Number two is you can give actually in the lobby at our giving kiosk by exit A and B. Give by cash, check or debit or credit as well. And the third one, it's on your way out at exit A to use the tip tap machine and you can tap up to 10 times if you want to. So we wanna say thank you from the bottom of our hearts to let for the giving that you do. And because you give, we are able to connect to God and connect others to Him as well. So super thankful for that. Absolutely right about that. And uh, Christiane, you know, we have uh, thrown a lot of information at everyone this this morning. And so um, if you have any questions about anything that we've discussed today, uh, we invite you to stop by the Connections Wall, look for someone with a blue shirt on or wearing a lanyard. And again, you can also visit our website if you're watching online, centralcc.ca. And while you're there, you can check out previous messages. You can contact our staff. You can stay updated on every coming event that's happening because we've got an events calendar uh, right at the bottom of our homepage. If you're here with us in person, Uh, Feel free to scan the QR code in the seat back right in front of you. Uh, You can also text our phone number, 905-937-5610. We've got lots of ways that you can connect with us, and we are here to assist you in any way that we possibly can. Well, Christiane, I think that's a wrap for us this morning. Yep. Um, It's going to be a fantastic day. Again, we talked about our baby dedications that we're going to see later. Mm -hmm. Um, And just amazing as we worship together. Uh, We're going to continue in our series called Forgotten Values. We're going to talk about hard work. Yes. I know that Pastor Bill uh, has a great encouraging message that will challenge us today. So uh, let's head into the auditorium as our Sunday experience begins right now. We're so glad that you're here. Why don't you stand if you're able and let's choose joy. This is the day you made. So I'll rejoice. 
rejoice and be glad, rejoice and be glad in it. This is where I believe that you are more than enough, more than enough for me. You are faithful to your promise, you are strong when I am weak. When I'm standing in your presence, I have everything I need. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Sing, oh my soul.
covenant. And that just means a relationship with promises. And the great thing about our God is that He never fails on His promises. He is so good to us. He's a faithful God. So let's sing about exactly who He is. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my
for this unexpected um, relationship. And I know there's so many of us in the room who, who walk unexpected roads. And I mean that because the twists and turns of life can be so difficult. And yet we have a God who's faithful, he's loyal, he's consistent. And he, um, he does all the work, <laughs> if I'm honest, because even when I fail him, even when we fail him, or even when we get it wrong, he made a way to repair it. So he does all the work. God, thank you that you are the relationship that we need in our lives and that you keep all your promises and that you're with us from the beginning of our days to the end of our days. So I don't know if you're going through an unexpected season, something you didn't know was coming, but God knew and God is with you. He deeply cares that you are traveling this path right now and he is with you. So I just wanna reflect as we continue to sing on the goodness of this God, of our God, the one who knows all, believes the best for us, knows what's coming. And yet he's right here with each and every one of us. Oh God, thank you for loving us. Thank you. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails. All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will say of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I have made Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my faithless he is faithful he is true to his word and he cannot deny himself hallelujah
praise you. We thank you, God. Do you know that God loves you today? As we sang that lyric, he's running after me all my life. He's running after me. I know there's some of you in the room who are like tears of joy. (laughs) Yes, and I feel it every day and I know it. It's so good, God, you're so good to me. And then there's some who are sensing like, I don't know if I believe that, but I sense it to be true in this moment. And I can feel God's presence in this room. And if that's you, all I have to say is God loves you. And it's true. He has been chasing you all of your life. But this thing we have with God is a relationship, which means it's two ways. But he is there and he is knocking and he is calling out to you and he is chasing you and he is loving you, I promise. So whatever the unexpected road has taken, you on, just know that God is with you. Amen. I'm going to invite you now to be seated as we continue on our service, as we embrace these little ones, these little miracles who are going to join our stage. We celebrate with their parents. God is so good. is child dedication. At Central, we dedicate rather than baptize children. We see baptism as a reflection of an individual's decision to follow Jesus. It's why we wait to baptize children until they are old enough to understand and believe. Today, this is simply a commitment before God and our church family to raise up a child in the way of God, as we read in Proverbs 22, verse 6. It is a way to acknowledge our children, not as our own, but rather as belonging to God, He created them, and He has a great plan for them. Lastly, it is a partnership. It is an opportunity for our church to commit to doing everything in our power to foster an environment where children can grow up to be who God has called them to be. So today, we follow in the example of Jesus, who took the children in His arms, and He blessed them. Well, good morning, church family. It's so good to be together and just to be able to experience these incredible moments. And so if you're kind of new to our church family, uh, we dedicate children uh, in reflection of what Jesus did. There was a time when there was a lot of kids and they wanted to be near Jesus because he just was so loving. And his disciples, they were kind of running patrol and they were like, no, kids, don't bother Jesus. He's too important. And yet Jesus said, let the little children come. And he blessed them. In this moment, what we're doing is, as parents, we're making a commitment that we're going to do everything we can to raise these children in the truth that God loves them, God has an amazing plan for their life, and they were chosen for this moment in history. And we as a church family are also making a commitment, just so you know, that we're going to give our time and our talent and our treasure to create opportunities for these kids to know that as well. Let's be a community of faith that builds one another up, that invests in the next generation, that believes that tomorrow can be better than yesterday, and that the hope of the world is resident on this stage because God is in his children. And so, I have the privilege of dedicating Peyton, and Peyton's name means who is like God, firm believer. And we're gonna dedicate each child with oil, again, a symbol for us of of the presence of God's spirit and power in their life. And so God, I just thank you so much for little Peyton. I thank you for her life. And I pray that she would know all the days of her life that she was created in your image, that she matters. I pray that you'd guard her heart, mind, and soul. And in this hard world, this difficult world, may you always be her foundation. I bless her in Jesus' name, amen. And we have some cousins, this is great. So this is Wren, which means small bird. 
You have a voice, a voice that needs to be heard. You're gonna make a difference. And so God, I pray for Ren. I thank you for her life. I just pray that you'd give her a song, a song of freedom, a song of hope, a song of joy. And when this world is difficult, may she sing it loudly, confidently, knowing God that you are for her. I pray that you'd give her mom and dad wisdom and strength to guide her all the days of her life. She would know she matters to you. She matters to this world. So bless her, I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. This is KC. I love your shirt. He does. Jesus does love you. That's amazing. And uh, his name means watchful, village, uh, vigilant, and brave. And so God, I just pray for Casey right now. I pray that there be a courage that is in him from very early on in his life, that he, know, he would know that you made him to be a warrior for good. God, I pray that you'd de so deeply instill your spirit in him that he will never forget who he is and what he was created for. I pray blessing and favor and that the truth that is on his shirt, that Jesus loves him, would never leave him. I bless him in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And this is Jody Lynn, right? Which means praised and holy. And I, I love that because holy means to be set apart for a noble purpose. And so we're gonna pray into that right now. So Jesus, I just thank you so much for Jody Lynn. I thank you for her life. I pray that she would know how special she is. And when this world tries to define her, in any other way than who you made her to be, give her the courage and the wisdom to stand strong, to be only who you created her to be, that she would always be set apart for a noble purpose. Guard and protect her to that end, I pray. Bless her mom and dad, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And this is Georgia. Oh, sorry, Georgia? Little brother. Oh, little bit, Hayden. Oh, it's right there, my bad, Hayden. Hi, Hayden. God will never miss you. Even when Pastor Bill doesn't get it right, it's okay. This is Hayden, thank you, and it means victorious. So God, I do pray that you would bring victory to Hayden's life all the days of his life. Fill him with that energy and that passion to bring victory. And I pray this victory wouldn't just be physical, but it would be emotional, relational, and spiritual. Guard and guide him all the days of his life. May he know he's never overlooked or forgotten. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Hayden. Okay, now we're with Georgia. And Georgia means worker of the earth. I love that. Would it be okay if I prayed with you? Okay. So Jesus, I thank you so much for Georgia. I pray that all the days of her life, she would know that she was put on this earth for a purpose. And that she'd learn that very early in life. May she know, God, a vision, a vision that will bring positive, powerful change to this world. May you fill her with your spirit so that wherever she goes, whoever she touches in life, God, they will be transformed by your love and your grace. So may she never forget that this earth is better because she's in it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Hayden. Amazing. Let's congratulate these families. Congratulations, that's awesome. And like I've said before, we take the mandate, be fruitful and multiply very seriously at this church. So just, just keep it coming, people, keep it coming. Rohan, you got your hands full, my friend. This is amazing. This is amazing. So this is Abigail, and it means my father's joy. And I know you are full of joy. Uh, <laughs> you're, so I get to pray for Abigail. God, I just thank you for this miracle. I thank you for her precious life. And I know she is gonna grow up in a home surrounded in amazing faith. She has a sister who's gonna love her and protect her, but she has a mom and dad who are gonna invest in the deep spiritual parts of her life. So I pray that you protect her heart, mind, and spirit. I know she was put on this planet to change and transform the world. So when we invest that, speak that into her life right now. Bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey. I may be a little biased, but William is a pretty great name. <laughs> so this is William, and it means 
I, I, I don't think it means strong-willed. I like the warrior part. It's a warrior. And so uh, it is my privilege to pray for William. Thank you for this life. I thank you, God, that in your perfect plan, you brought him into this world for this time. And I know that he is going to be a warrior for justice. I know that because that's in his mom and dad's heart. I know, God, that he is going to be a defender of those who are defenseless. He's going to be someone who stands strong in a world that's often weak. I pray, God, that this would be part of his character, his nature, all the days of his life. We speak his name into, his, into him. Be a courageous warrior for good because this world needs you. I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. This is Brielle, right? And Brielle means God is my strength, love, and peace. So, Brielle, I pray blessing on you. Thank you that you are full of God's love and strength. May you experience his peace and joy all the days of your life. And may you be as beautiful on the inside as you are on the outside. May you just be filled with God's love and may it flow out of you to everyone who meets you and knows you. You're a joy. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Nora. Hi, little one. This is so amazing. What an amazing gift. God is so good. So good. So I just thank you so much for Nora. I thank you for her name, which means light and compassion. I pray that she would know the light of Jesus in her life all the days of her life. She would always know she's loved and safe in your arms. I pray that she would be a light everywhere she goes in this dark world. Keep her strong, keep her safe. But God, may your light always shine in and through her. I bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I have the privilege to pray for Anna, Charlotte, and I have the privilege of being her uncle. Isn't my niece a cutie? <laughs> well, Anna means favor, grace. And also, her names have been given to her in memory of her great-grandmother as well. And so, I just pray over you, Anna, that just as your name declares that you would experience God's amazing grace in all over your life. When people look at you, they will see God's amazing grace. And that not only you would experience it, but also you would extend it to others. That you'll be known as a gracious person. And just as memories of others before you, that you would be one that would be a blessing to so many different generations, bringing different ages age groups together, different kinds of people together and pointing them to Jesus. So I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us celebrate with these families. You're awesome. Bless you. Bless you. Isn't it great to be part of family? And maybe I'm getting older and more sentimental, but I just believe there are great days ahead. If we choose to invest in the next generation, Let's give them a foundation to build upon, hope to believe in, and a vision for the future because God is in it and he's in them. We're gonna continue our experience, so I encourage you just to focus your attention to the screen. Well, good morning. 
Uh, if you're just joining us maybe for the very first time or you came to celebrate with one of these families, thank you so much for being here today. I just acknowledge that there are so many places you could be and you chose to be here and we are, I mean this sincerely, better because you're with us today. And my hope is that all of us would leave today with an understanding that there's a God of hope and joy and peace and love and that we'd all lean deep into that today. But I want to start with a question and the question is, what is the biggest thing you've ever forgotten? Huh. Maybe, maybe it was keys. Anyone ever forgotten your keys somewhere or your favorite pair of socks, right? You've forgotten that. Yeah, okay, that, that's, that's not terrible. Maybe you've forgotten a date, like a birthday, an anniversary. Okay, how many of you had to learn the hard way, guys? I mean, let's be honest. You forgot an anniversary. Th those are bad things because, or maybe you've forgotten a name. Uh, I, I said this in the first experience and someone made me relive my greatest fear. She looked at me and said, what's my name? And I panicked. I couldn't remember. It was awful. Uh, we've, when we forget things, it's an awful feeling. It's a helpless feeling. But it also strains relationships, right? <laughs> if you don't believe me, just forget an anniversary and see how that works out for you. But I've got a better story. We, we uh, were a part of a small group in British Columbia before we moved here. And all of our friends were kind of in that stage, like these couples, where we were just having babies, and it was exciting, and we were going to get together for Christmas, uh, just for a celebration and a time together, and so everyone was arriving, and we were all showing off our new babies, uh, and really excited. And the last guest to come, I won't say his name, uh, because he is a pastor in Calgary. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll get, that's, all the, that's all the clues I'm going to give you. But he, his wife, he dropped his wife off. He was being a gentleman. He drops his wife off. So she comes in the door, takes off her coat and her boots, and she's settled in. And, and oh, I almost said his name. And then he, he comes in, and Heather's like, where's the baby? He had forgotten his baby in the car. No, 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 dude, no, no, no. In his defense, it was such a new thing for him, but his baby, so you can just imagine that did not go so well for him in that moment. But we hate forgetting things because when we forget things, especially important things, it robs us of really our purpose, our destiny, what we could be, and it strains relationships. And that's why over these last few weeks, we've been in this series entitled Forgotten Values. We've been exploring this amazing idea that in the book of Genesis, in the creation narrative, there is a code that was put into human beings that when forgotten, these values are forgotten, it erodes trust, it erodes relationship, it erodes purpose. And so over these last few weeks, we've been trying to lean back in what are these forgotten values? What has culture forgotten to its own peril? And how can we reclaim them to live fully in who we were created to be? And so in week number one, we talked about honesty and how really in our culture that is almost forgotten, that everyone is twisting things and spinning things to their own end. Half-truths are full lies, right? We learned that and we learned that really when we're truly honest, what we're doing is creating space for others to be fully known and fully loved. And it's what we all really crave and need in our life. And then last week we talked about hospitality. We talked about creating spaces for, uh, for other people to experience the goodness, to experience and express the goodness of God. And we asked this really hard question, am I doing that? Am I creating spaces for other people to experience God? But today we're gonna to talk about hard work. <laughs> now I know, I, you're like, really? Come on, I come to church to get away from work. Why do I have to talk about work? And I'll tell you why, because work has become a curse in our culture. And we have forgotten that actually it was designed by God to be a gift. And we're gonna explore that today. What would it look like this week in your life and in my life if we saw our work, whatever it is, as a joy, as a gift, as an opportunity to be a blessing? What if we worked really hard this week to create spaces for, the tr for our true meaning and purpose to be realized? And so to explore this, we're going to go back again into the creation account. I've been inviting you and encouraging you throughout this whole series to read the creation narrative again in Genesis chapters 1 to 6. Um, and so hopefully you did that again this week. Keep doing that. It's a great reminder for us of who we really were created to be. So in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, if you have your Bibles, you can open up there. Or if you have the YouVersion app on your phone or another Bible app, uh, turn to Genesis chapter 2, starting in verse 15. So the Bible tells us that God created this incredible world. 
I mean, I, I love fall. I love the leaves. They're turning. It's so beautiful. Wasn't yesterday just absolutely stunning? Um, what an amazing, amazing day. When you think about it, the way the world was put together, so perfectly orchestrated for our, not only our survival, but for our enjoyment. It says God created all of this. And then God created humanity. And it says in verse 15, God said to the man, or put the man, he created him and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it. There it is. To work it and to take care of it. God created this amazing world and he said, listen, I'm giving you this as a gift. I'm, I'm giving this to you to, to find your purpose and meaning and working with me to bring order into this incredible space. But instead of choosing God's order, we read this last week and the week before, Adam and Eve chose chaos. Instead of creating spaces for God to be honored and followed, they chose a selfish space for desire to be fed. And as a result, everything was broken. They lost their way. They lost their purpose. And so what happened? Well, we, we learned last week that they created a space for selfish desire to be fed. Instead, we as humanity became takers instead of givers. Instead of stewards, we became slaves. And this is an important distinction because many of us in this room, many of you watching online, myself included, at times feel like we are captive to our work, a slave to the vicious cycle of just working to make ends meet. And in our economy today, it's getting harder and harder. And it's more and more frustrating because we maybe can't make ends meet. Or maybe you're here today and you're struggling to find work. What do you do in those situations when work has become an unbearable weight. Well, it says in Genesis 3:17 that because they lost their purpose, a curse came into the world. It says in chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, to Adam, God said, cursed is the ground because of you. And through painful toil, you'll eat food from it all the days of your life. Now, I had to stop and think about this for a minute. Okay, so... Before the fall, it seems like everything is in order and everything is in peace and harmony. And after, it seems like everything is broken. Now we have things called weeds and mosquitoes. Like, what happened? I was thinking, did God create those after the fall or did they exist before the fall? And if they did, how did that all work together? It's a fascinating thought, isn't it? But God is very clear that the ground is cursed because of our unwillingness to follow God's order. That actually everything was in order. And so instead of living in synergy by trusting God in his way, we decided to take control and to try to control our environment. We were the ones who said, no, I'm going to take this land and make it what I want it to be. We were the ones who brought the curse. And the reason was because we stopped seeing God as our provider and we felt like we had to be survivors. Here's what I mean by that. We had some really good friends who, they had a couple kids, uh, children of kids of their own, but they really wanted to adopt someone from a, from a disadvantaged situation. And so through an agency, they found a child who grew up in a, in, a, in a really difficult situation in another part of the world. And they really wanted to adopt this child and bring them into their home. And it took many years, but eventually they were able to secure the papers and adopt this child and bring them home into their own home. And I remember um, I was talking to the dad and he, he, he told me the story that the, the first time they sat down for a family meal, the, the, the food was put on the table. And as soon as the food was put on the table, this child leaped out of their chair and just started grabbing with their bare hands food, putting it in their mouth as quickly as they could and, and hoarding it and actually almost snarling at the other siblings. And, and the reason, and of course, with deep empathy, they were able to navigate this brokenness. The problem was that this child had grown up in such a broken environment this child had been in an orphanage where there was only a, a limited amount of food and if you didn't fight and claw and grab and steal it, you weren't going to eat. And because this child believed it was still an orphan, it had not yet registered that it was, he now was a son and that he didn't have to fight, that his new mom and dad were gonna provide for him and take care of him. 
and that his siblings weren't the enemies to be targeted, to be pushed away, but together as a family, they were going to find all that they needed. It took a long time for that to be broken. And it's true for us as well. My gut is that many of us believe that work is something we have to do just to make ends meet. We, we, we approach work with frustration and anger and bitterness because we believe this cultural lie that somehow our identity or our worth or getting what we want is tied to our work instead of the God who is our provider. And we live like slaves when we were created to be sons. We live like orphans when we were created to be daughters. And God is our provider. And when we forget that, when we try to take control of our environment, everything around us is cursed. Because let's be honest, weeds actually serve a useful purpose. Maybe you didn't think about that, I did research just to prove it. Weeds actually help the soil around the plants that you want for things to be broken down so there's nutrients in the soil. Weeds are also a habitat for some of the important insects that we actually need. We, we eliminate one species just to create another species problem. It's, it, it, it's, it's when we're out of order, out of sync. And weeds are actually even used for medicine. Apparently, dandelion coffee is good. I, I'll take whoever said that word for it. I'm not going to try it. But, but, but weeds actually were created with purpose. It's, it's when we take everything out of its order, when we try to be in control, when we try to manipulate our environment for our own gain. And often, if we're honest, let's just be honest, for our selfish gain, the curse is upon us. And the real tragedy of this ideology in our world is that we get stuck on the hamster wheel of performance, right? Work harder, get promotions, get recognized, get ahead, get paid. So what? So that you can have more stuff, right? This, this endless cycle. Step on other people to get where you need to be. This, this endless cycle ends in frustration and emptiness. It's like trying to drive a car without any gasoline in it. No wonder you have to drag yourself to work. No wonder you grit your teeth through endless meetings. It's no wonder Monday is a drudgery and you couldn't make it without your coffee. Right? But let's just stop for a second. Do you really think that was God's plan for us? Do you think when God created humanity that his plan was that we would hate our work and that we'd be a slave to it and that our value would be to things that are we attach ourselves to that rust and destroy. Do you, do you think consumerism, materialism was God's design? And if not, how do we change it? I like what Simon Sinek said. He said, working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Yeah, tell me about it, right? But working for something that you love, we call that passion. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, the Bible, I love it because it's so authentic, it's so real. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, just say that 10 times fast. Uh, chapter 2, it expresses this futility of thinking. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? All their days, their work is grief and pain. Even at night, their minds do not rest. Okay, confession. Is that you? It's me sometimes. So how do we change that? What, what if I told you that there was a way to reverse the curse? What if I told you that your work could actually become a place of incredible joy? Now, and when I say work, I don't mean just uh, maybe those who are working in the workforce, but maybe you're at school, maybe you're a stay-at-home parent. All of those things are work, valuable, important work. Anything you are doing to contribute to society. What if, what if tomorrow morning you could wake up and jump out of bed because you could hardly get to work? Sounds too good to be true, right? But it isn't. It isn't if we live again in the original design God had for us. And so what if we could turn that around? Well, we can by changing three mindsets. The first mindset we can change is believing that actually work was a part of God's original design. We read that in Genesis chapter two, that God put us on this planet to work with them. What if we actually believe that work was a gift, a gift God gave us in order to provide for ourselves and our families? 
In Genesis chapter one, God makes this promise. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And this passage, unfortunately, has been distorted in two extremes. The one extreme is just take advantage of everything. Just wreck the earth. Take for your own, good, your own gain. Exploit it. It's yours for the taking. And that's not what God was saying. The other is don't do anything. Like, don't, don't touch anything, don't mess anything up, let everything happen the way it is. No, 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 you don't understand because you need to know that God is a God of order. And when he invited us into work, our work was to bring God's order to this world. It was a gift. And so your life is like a garden. And either you're gonna see weeds that you need to crush or you're gonna see foliage that needs to be nurtured so you can enjoy it. You're either going to start seeing work as a gift given to you by God or as a curse that you have to carry in isolation. Because God said, actually, work is good. Work is good. It's, it's the way that we take care of ourselves. It's the way we take care of the world. It's the way we bring order. And right now, we need order in our chaos. But it's also an opportunity for growth. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, Paul reminds us, let us not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And so if you're a farmer and you're looking at a barren field, you either see boulders or you see barley. It's really a perspective. And so my encouragement to you is to maybe think about work differently. That work is more than a task. It's a part of God's original design. And that it's actually through hard work that we create space for true meaning and purpose in life. So... See work as a gift. Second, and maybe this is even going to be harder for some of us to get our head around, but see it as an act of worship. See it as an act of worship. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. You see, worship is not uh, restricted to a short worship set on a Sunday morning. Worship is not restricted to your personal devotional time with God. Worship is literally, if you choose it, everything you say, everything you do, everywhere you go, every conversation can be an act of worship. Every thought can be an act of worship. Every act can be an act of worship when we choose to see it that way. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, it says, whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart, as if working for the Lord, not for human masters. There we have that servant-slave mindset again, right? When you work for God, and I'm going to explain what that means in a minute here, but when you work for God, you do it passionately because you realize everything is a gift from Him, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from God as a reward. I remember... Um, I had the incredible opportunity, I guess, at an early age to really understand this. Maybe it was because my parents instilled it in me. I grew up in a, like, you know, you work hard and you, you do your best and, and you serve people. Um, maybe it was that environment. Maybe it was an understanding that I actually believe every opportunity I've been given is a gift from God. I don't know what it was, but I, I've, I learned very early how to apply this idea. I remember when I was in college, I needed some money. So uh, there was a, a board in our, at our school and it had all these job opportunities. And one job opportunity was logging in the Queen Charlotte Islands in BC. Now, if you've never heard of the Queen Charlotte Islands, uh, what you have to do is you have to drive 18 hours north from Vancouver and then you get on a boat, uh, they call it a boat, it's like a massive boat, over the open ocean for six hours to this island. And in this, on this island, there are three communities. I lived in a community of 300 loggers. That was where I was going to work. I went up with four people. <laughs> Within the first week, two of them left. And after the first month, the third left. It was me and the trees and the chainsaw. That was it. And it was hard work. It was really hard work. There were days I had to drag myself 
Uh, literally, I, I, what, my job was, was to limb and top trees. And so the fallers would be ahead of me and the guys picking up the trees would be behind me. Often I'd be all by myself with this massive chainsaw. I've got stories to tell. Trees fell on me. Oh, it's all exciting. But I was there all day and going sometimes, why am I here? What is the point of this? Because if this is just about making a lot of money, I, I can think of other things I'd rather do. But I remembered this principle. So before I went up to Port Clements, there was a small little church in this community. There was one church and one like uh, convenience store. That was it. And uh, I made a deal with the, with the church there. I said, you know, if I work on Sundays, you know, help with the service. And if I start a youth group, <laughs> they kind of laughed because there were only three youth in the entire community. Uh, but if I start a youth group, uh, could I stay in the attic for free? <laughs> That's the Dutch in me. Anyway, so I said, can I, can I stay in the attic for free? Now, the attic had, had no insulation. It was right on the ocean. It was freezing cold, even though it was the middle of summer. The water was rusted out. It was, it was awesome. I mean, it was awesome. Every day was like a countdown to get out of here in some ways, but I knew why I was there. And even though Carlene at that time was far away, she was in Africa on a missions trip having a great time. And, uh, and even though every day I had to eat one loaf of bread, that was my lunch, peanut butter and jam, loaf of bread, and one jug of four liter water, that was it every day. Every day I knew why I was there. And I was actually there for those three kids. And so when I was working and I started feeling sorry for myself and I started complaining and griping, I was reminded by God, Bill, I'm taking care of you. This is the way you're gonna, I'm gonna provide for your education. But also, you came here because those three kids need you. I lived with that passion when I woke up in the middle of the night freezing, when I had to sit in rust edited out water, when I had to eat another loaf of bread with peanut butter and jelly. I reminded myself of why I was there. And by the end of that summer, two of those youth got baptized in the ocean with me and both went to Bible college. Now, I'm not telling you that to tell you that I'm a hero, because I am not. But I tell you that because whatever your work is, if you find God's purpose, when you invite God into every workspace, when you understand why you are in a place, it changes everything. When I was a service manager at Boston Pizza, I was 19 years old. I was the youngest staff member, and yet I was leading all the service staff. You can just imagine how that went. And if you've never worked in the service industry, it's cutthroat. Like there's competition for tables. There's, it was awful. So I decided that my role, I would always take the tables nobody else wanted. They actually started calling me the Terminator because if, some, if someone came in who needed to be escorted out, I would take care of it. I was willing to work on the most difficult clients or those who came in to be served at our restaurant. And they hated me because I made more tips than anyone else. And I'll tell you why though, it wasn't again, maybe I worked really hard at my craft, I did, but it was because I saw people. And I saw every table as an opportunity for the love of Jesus to be expressed and experienced. Now, I'm exaggerating because I didn't always get that right, but I did. I remember in the middle of our busiest times in the back kitchen, you know, there'd be dishes dropping and people swearing and angry and frustrated and complaining and griping. And I'd start singing a worship song. They hated it. They hated it, but I was going to bring God into that environment. I was going to not get sucked into the darkness and the chaos of this world. I chose to bring God's order everywhere I went. And by the end, my, there was a, a lady, she was the oldest staff member, and she liked me the least. And she had such a difficult time with me. But when, when I left after that time there, she gave me a hug. And she just said, you know, thank you for always being kind to me. I didn't have to preach. I didn't have to, you know, give her an exposition on a passage in the Bible or answer any tough questions. I just needed to invite God into every situation. And my question for all of us in this place is what would happen tomorrow? If you're going back to school, that is your work, by the way. Uh, that's your work right now. Um, or maybe you're a stay-at-home parent love on those kids or, or whatever your work is, or maybe you, you're struggling to find work. What if you invited God into that process? What if you saw it as an opportunity, maybe that job opportunity to, or that interview just to, to express really the goodness of God? What would happen, do you think, in our places of work if we saw it as a gift 
and an opportunity to worship, I'll tell you what would happen. It would transform the mundane into something supernatural. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna give you a challenge. You ready? This week, I want, for, for those of you who'd like to take my, me up on the challenge, every day I want you to, to wake up 15 minutes early. Okay, so whatever time you normally wake up, wake up 15 minutes early and say this simple prayer. God, remind me that today whatever you've put before me is a gift, an opportunity. God, give me the courage to seize every opportunity you give me. God, give me the strength to bring your goodness into every moment of today. God, allow me to express your goodness in celebration with those around me. May I be a reflection of your goodness because you've chosen this day for me. You've chosen this place for me. You've chosen this time for me. And if you do that every day this week, I'd love for you to send me an email and tell me how it went. I kind of have an idea, but I'll let you run the experiment because I know it would transform the mundane into the divine. See, when we invite God into our workspaces, it becomes an opportunity to express the goodness of God. But there's a third mindset that needs to shift. The first is, imagine if instead of complaining about what you don't have this week, you thanked God for what you do have. Just, just that little tw tweak. Imagine what would happen if you saw your job and, you know, and people say to me all the time, oh, Bill, it's easy for you to say because you have a job you love. Your job is so easy. You only work half a day a week, right? So how can you be telling us about real work? <laughs> and I'd love for you to tag along with me for a week. Uh, you could answer my emails. You could deal with the difficult situations. You could come with me into those dark places. See, the truth is, it's not about what work you do. It's about what God, what you, what the work of God you allow in you, right? It's not what you do, it's what God is doing in you that matters. And then every moment can be a moment for worship, even in your pain. And this is gonna be the hard one, okay? But I've learned this. When I have been at my lowest moments, when I've chosen to worship, even a single candle dispels the darkness of an entire room. When I choose the weapon of worship, I choose gratitude and thanksgiving. When I allow God's order to come into my life, instead of getting sucked into the chaos and seeing the chaos, I see God's goodness. Then third, I can become a blessing to others. I thought about this. Everything we do should be in order for others to experience God's blessing whether that's in providing for your household, your family, but also a blessing to others. In John 5, 17, Jesus said, my father is always at his work to this very day and I too am working. Why? Because he's working for us. It's the generous servant attitude and heart that we should approach work with. A guy was in a brick factory and he was just kind of uh, touring the place and he asked three People working in the factory, they were on an assembly line making bricks. And he asked the first guy, what do you do? And the one guy said, well, I, I just make bricks. All day, I just make bricks. So he went to the second guy, he said, what, what, what do you do? And he's like, well, I make bricks and I stack them on a pile over there. That's what I do all day. I just make the bricks and stack them on a pile. He, goes to the, he went to the third guy and he said, what, what are you doing? He goes, every day, I'm building houses for families. What was the difference? Same job different perspective. And when you see your work as an opportunity to be a blessing, to do good for others, it changes everything. So we must ask ourselves, if we're using our work to create positive change for those around us and those entrusted to our care. I close with one story. It's a story from Greek mythology. Many of you know it. It's the story of King Midas. And King Midas had a lot. He was wealthy, but again, he was given an opportunity to get one wish. And again, like most of us, he believed the lie that if he had more, he'd be happier, right? Because more buys more stuff, and more stuff means more enjoyment. And so his wish was that everything he touched would turn to gold. Sounds great, right? Except when he went to eat his meal that day, every time he tried to put food into his mouth, it turned to gold. And every time he tried to to take a drink, it turned to solid gold. And worst of all, while he was sitting at the table, his only daughter that he loved with his whole life ran into his arms and turned into gold. The 
point of the story is that everything that you need to experience life is actually all around you. And when we get sucked into this world's narrative of work to get what I want, to get what I need, to feed our selfish desire, rather than to bring the order of God into every space I am working, it actually becomes a curse. I'll tell you why you hate your job. Because you see it as a curse and not a blessing. I'll tell you why you're mean to the people around you at work. Because you don't see an opportunity to express God's goodness. You see them as a threat to you getting what you want or your space. I'll tell you why the days drag day after day after day. Because you've lost the purpose in every day. And we could change this if we reclaimed what God's design was for us. We could change this right now if tomorrow morning you woke up with an attitude that my work is a gift. Whatever I've been called to do today, I will see it as a gift. And I will live in it as in acts of worship. I will bring God's goodness into this place so that I can be a blessing to others. You really want to live a fulfilling, meaningful life? Then live a life of generosity. When we give our time and our talent and our treasure, it isn't out of religious obligation. It is out of divine opportunity to bring God's goodness everywhere we go. When we give our time and our talent and treasure, kids are invested in. These kids that grew up on the stage, they are, we surround them and create an environment where they are loved. When we invest our time and talent and treasure, there are kids who are going to get a lunch this week who would not have a lunch otherwise because we invested. There are kids around the world who are being transformed because we invested our time and our talent and treasure. And here's the best part. It's not about how much you get paid and it's not about the title on your door. It's about the size of your heart. And when your heart is full of God's goodness, that spreads, it's contagious and it changes the world. It changes the world. And so maybe that's why Paul in 1 Corinthians said, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And in Ephesians 2.10, he reminds us that we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. And so here's my final thought. Maybe you don't know this yet or maybe you don't believe it yet. But God created you in this time and in this place to bring his goodness to a world that needs his order. And if we could just see that in everything we do this week, if we could see everything as a gift, as an act of worship, as an opportunity to be generous, it would change everything. It would change everything. And so I wanna encourage you to think about my challenge this week 15 minutes early, invite God into every space and tell me how it goes at the end of this week. I just have one quick uh, announcement before you go. This week also, we have an opportunity to invest in our community and it's in an event called Trunk or Treat. Now, if you're kind of new to our church, maybe this is kind of a, a, a foreign concept and you wonder why are we doing this? I'll tell you why. Because on that night, over 3,000 people in our community are gonna come through this space and those kids Maybe some of them have never, ever seen someone who actually genuinely cares deeply about them. Maybe those parents are struggling and battling, and, and maybe it'll just be a nice smile or a handshake or a welcome or an invitation to a Niagara Christmas or to a church experience that will change everything. What if you saw everything you did as an eternal, from an eternal perspective? And that's what it is for us, for Trunk or Tree as well. And so if you'd like to jump on board with that and help us out, make a difference in our community, you can sign up. Uh, you see the car outside when you walked in. Pretty cool car. Uh, but more important, sign up for Trunk or Treat. That is available for you there. And if you're watching online right now, just before I give the blessing, uh, please don't uh, hesitate to interact with our online host there. Love to pray with you, answer any questions that you have. Also, if you're here in this place and you're struggling maybe with work, maybe you, don't, you need work, maybe you need a job, we believe in the power of prayer. We have a prayer team that's up here at the front that would love to pray with you or our, one of our pastors, you'll know them because they have a lanyard. Um, that's where you know they're safe. Um, you can pray with one of them as well. Just don't leave this place without understanding who God made you to be. So here's my blessing today. 
May the God who created you fill you with hope and purpose again. May you go into whatever he has prepared for you this week with joy, knowing that you have been put in that place to make a difference. May you actively bring God's order to the chaos. May you choose every day to see it as a gift. May you choose every day to bring God into it as an act of worship. And may you choose every day to use everything you've been given to serve others generously. If you do that, you will live in the deepest value that God instilled in us as human beings. So may you go in his peace and in his power. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.